This is the Drill Sergeant with another nugget of gold for fiery trials, creating jewels for the kingdom of God. And I am Sister Barbara. Today we're dealing again with Healing Secrets Lesson Number 3, Jesus and the Doctors. Scripture starting Mark chapter 5, verse 25 through 30 and 34. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. It means right away her blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knew in himself that virtue had gone or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the crowd and said, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. I, this just really stood out of me because right now we're in a pandemic and so many people are sick and so many people have died. But the word of God said she pressed and touched the hem of his garment. She pressed and found Jesus when she heard the word about Jesus. She knew that he was a healer. She pressed in and she touched and took what she needed. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I believe I'll be made whole. I didn't have to have nobody lay hands on me. I didn't have to have nobody come and visit me. I just needed to get through to Jesus myself. In this pandemic, you need to get through to Jesus for yourself. We may be thankful to God for giving us doctors and vaccines and stuff. Their vocation is one of the most noble for a large number of them truly seek to do with love and compassion all they can do to alleviate the suffering that burdens humanity as a result of sin. There are even some who are zealous or desirous servants of Jesus Christ. All doctors are not sinners, seeking also the good of their patients' souls. Nevertheless, Jesus himself is always the first, the best, and the greatest physician. I've experienced that so many times. The last time was when my son passed away and the nurses and the doctors cared for him and had him looking like a little baby in a bonnet, all clean and everything while he was in a self-induced uh, uh, coma. But I heard them as he was passing, pleading and screaming, we love you, we love you. Don't leave us. Stay with us. So many of them want you to live. Don't let people deceive you and make you think that all doctors and science want you to die. They want you to live. And there are evil forces that will try to make you believe that all doctors and all science is evil. And it is not. Jesus heals diseases for which earthly physicians can do nothing. For the Father gave him this power when he charged him with the work of our redemption. Jesus, in taking our human body upon himself, delivered it from the dominion of sin and Satan. He has made our bodies temples of the Holy Spirit and members of his own body. See Corinthians 6 and 
15 through 19. Even in our day, how many have been dismissed by the doctors as incurable? We have no known cure. How many cases of cancer, infection, paralysis, heart disease, blindness, and deafness have been healed by him? Is it not then astonishing that so small a number of the sick come to him? Jesus' method is quite different from that of earthly physicians. They seek to serve God in making use of remedies that are found in the natural world according to the natural properties of each, while the healing that proceeds from Jesus is of a totally different order. It is by divine power, the power of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus heals. The difference between these two ways of healing is very striking. I remember once when I discovered that so many times in nature that God created, the cure is often right next to the problem. Like say for instance, if you had poison ivy, so many times a plant is growing right next to it that could cure the symptoms of poison ivy. So we cannot discredit natural science and the natural things that God gives men wisdom to deal with and to help his people and to cure us. But Jesus' method is just different. In order to understand it better, Consider this example. Here is a physician who is an unbeliever, but extremely clever in his profession. Many sick people owe their healing to him. God gives this result by means of the prescribed remedies and the physician's knowledge of them. He has knowledge and God gave us knowledge. Here is another physician who is a believer and who praise God's blessings on the remedies that he employs. In this case also, a large number are healed, but in neither case does the healing bring with it any spiritual blessing. I am a firm witness that God will put you in the hands of skilled physicians, and many of them are saved and spirit Field. God gave me a spirit, several spirit-filled doctors. That last one I had, she, before I even met her, she had been monitoring me from a distance. And she finally asked to see me and meet me. I had no idea. She was monitoring my disease from a distance. And finally, when they called me and said, the doctor wants to meet you, I was like, I don't know who could be possibly wanting to meet me. And when I met her, she said, Barbara. I have been praying for you and immediately it gripped my heart because I knew I was hearing the Lord had placed me in the hands of a skilled physician. She said, it's very hard to know how to treat patients with your disease. She said, but we're going to pray and we are going to believe that what I prescribe for you is going to bring you healing. And guess what? It did. My cardiologist, the same. He prayed with me and he blessed me. And God has given me many more years to my life. As in many, they will be preoccupied, even the believing among the doctors, with the remedies that they use much more than what, much more than what the Lord may be doing with them. In some instances, their healing may be more hurtful than beneficial to their spiritual lives. On the other hand, when it is Jesus alone to whom the sixth person applies for healing, he learns to rely no longer on remedies, but to put himself into direct contact with God's love and his almightiness. What is God? God is loving and he is almighty. In order to obtain such healing, 
He must begin by confessing and renouncing one's sins and exercising a living faith. Then healing will come directly from the Lord who takes possession of the sick body. It thus becomes a blessing for the soul as well as for the body. But it is not God who has given medical treatments to man. It is, at, but excuse me, but is it not God who has given medical treatments to man? It is asked, doesn't their power come from him? Without a doubt, it does. Let me say that again. God is the one who gives the medical physicians knowledge for treatments. And the power came from him, without a doubt. But on the other hand, is it not God who has given us his son with all power to heal? Will we follow the way of natural law with all those who do not yet know Christ and also with those of his children whose faith is still too weak to abandon themselves to his almightiness? Now I was talking to a family member about this the other day. Some people are just babies. Some people have not matured to a point to where they can trust in the almightiness of our God. There's nothing wrong with them going to the doctor seeking for help because at this time their faith is still too weak to just trust in God. Or rather, do we choose the way of faith, receiving healing from the Lord and from the Holy Spirit? Seeing therein the result and the proof of our redemption. We have to believe that God is able to heal us. The healing that is brought about by our Lord Jesus brings with it and leaves behind it more real blessing than the healing that is obtained through physicians. Healing that relied on human means alone has been a misfortune to the spiritual lives of more persons than one. Although thoughts of the Lord may cross the sick man's mind while he's still on his sick bed, once he has been healed, he finds himself sometime far from the Lord. It is not that way when it is Jesus who heals. Healing is granted after confession of sin. Therefore, it brings the sufferer nearer to Jesus and it establishes a new link between him and the Lord. It causes him to experience his love and power. It begins within him a new life of faith and holiness. When the woman who had touched the hem of Jesus' garment felt that she was healed, she learned something of what divine love means. She went away possessing the words, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. God gave her something mighty. Oh, you who are suffering from some sickness, know that Jesus, the sovereign healer, is yet in our midst. He is close to us, and he has given many new proofs of his presence to his church and people are you ready to break with the world to abandon yourself to him with faith and confidence to some he said go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you fear not i am with you said the lord remember that divine healing is a part of the life of faith some people are able to walk in and grab a miracle and then they know and become aware that God is the Almighty. If nobody around you can help you in prayer, if no elder is at hand to pray the prayer of faith, James 5, 14 through 15, do not be afraid to go to the Lord yourself in the silence of solitude. Like the woman who touched the hem of his garment, she has been all her money. She had been everywhere, but she couldn't find healing. Commit the care of your body to the Lord. Commit it to Him. Get quiet before Him. And like the poor woman say, I shall be 
made whole. Perhaps it may take some time to break the chains of your unbelief, but assuredly none who wait on him shall be ashamed. Psalms 25 and 3. He says, you shall not be ashamed. Drill sergeant, you shall not be ashamed. Father, I thank you right now. Whoever is listening to me, they shall not be ashamed. Father, for your word is powerful and it is quick and it is sharp as a two-edged sword, dividing even the bone from the marrow. You are able to separate all sickness and disease from our midst. And Lord, we thank you. Oh God, right now we thank you. Lord, we cry out to you from all over this world. Help us today, Lord. We need help. We need your healing power like never before. We need your confirmation of healing like never before. God, protect us in this time. Protect us in this season. Give your doctors wisdom, oh God. Give them wisdom along with Jesus on how to help us be healed. Father, give your scientists knowledge on what to do for the masses of your people. Father, because we know there are many born again, spirit-filled believers amongst the doctors. Father, they are there with a commitment to help your people and to help the world. Father, we thank you because we know you see us. And we thank you because as in Jesus, he said, my father always hears and answers my prayer. I thank you, Lord, for this word today. Jesus and the doctors, another healing secret. And this is Pastor Barbara, the drill sergeant with Another nugget of gold for fiery trials. God bless you today. Bye-bye.